I was a teacher for many, many years. And the children who struggled the most at school, whether it was academically, whether it was with the discipline, whether it was the structure, were always children who came from broken homes who didn't have a father around. But it was always a great taboo. You can never say it because then you're demonizing single mothers and you're punching down on single mothers, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that I found really powerful about your book is, is the way that you approach this issue, in particular, the long-term implications for children not having a man around the house. Would you be able to explain that a little bit more, Mary? This is the best known fact in sociology, and it has been for decades. It's just that nobody wants to emphasize it for obvious reasons. Not having a biological father in the house raises risks to children, period. It raises uh, risks of physical and sexual abuse by mom's boyfriends. And it also seems to um, make it harder for male children to become men, that is, functioning reasonable men, uh, again, for obvious reasons. So in Primal Screams, as you know, I'm trying to do something new with this debate because it is so ossified. Um, yeah. It's not really even a debate. This stuff is so taboo. And that's why I get into the research on animals, especially mammals, because I think that gives us a safer way of talking about some of these things. During the past couple of decades, scientists have learned a lot uh, that they did not expect about animal behavior. Number one, animals are intensely familial. The myth of the lone wolf, which I open the book with, is just that. It's a myth. Wolves don't run around alone. <laughs> Wolves run around in packs. We, we would call nuclear families, actually, typically mom, dad, um, pups. And it's not only wolves. Look at just about any mammal um, and you find the same pattern. So this is important because, first of all, it goes to show that at least in nature, as far as nature is concerned, animals aren't a bunch of atomized beings who are out there, you know, finding their glitter families and their substitute families. No, animals exist and flourish in a biologically related family. Um, the other thing is social learning. And this is terribly important, uh, I think. Scientists now know that animals learn by watching other animals. In particular, they learn by watching their mothers and their siblings and their fathers. Why does this matter? Well, I give the example of the, the cat that can go up a tree but can't get down the tree, which is something scientists have studied. Because some cats can get out of trees and some cats can't. The working theory is that the cats that know how to climb down out of the trees are those who learned by watching their siblings or their mothers or their fathers. And cats who can't get out of trees didn't learn that because they were isolated from their families, typically house cats. So that's really interesting. Does it apply to us? I think it very much applies to us. Consider the family is smaller, fathers are absent, Many people don't have siblings or a sibling of the same sex or a sibling of the opposite sex or cousins of the opposite sex or cousins of the same sex. What I'm saying is for all that we think we're so sophisticated and advanced, we actually have shrunk the number of people we can learn from effectively. And I think, again, we're seeing this on a, on a social scale. People often remark, say, about transgenderism, uh, homosexuality, that it seems these things seem to have exploded in recent times and that it's not just that these things have been destigmatized, it's also that they're growing in real numbers. My response to that is we have taken out of our lives, I mean, inadvertently, but really, uh, the kinds of ways in which people used to learn about the opposite sex from a young age, for example. How could there not be confusion given what we've done to ourselves, given all of those acts of subtraction from our lives? So the idea that people are now struggling extra hard to find their identities is not an idea that comes as a surprise 
if you read what happens with animals, when animals are separated from their families and communities and the dysfunctional behavior they exhibit uh, when they are um, living in that unnatural way. 